And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. But they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth, and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Israelites, the last few messages on returning to the Father was extremely important for you to know. Before we return to the Spirit Realm series, Israelites everywhere needed to know who the God of their fathers is. Returning to the Father is important because you must know who to cry out to when you're on the battlefield during spiritual warfare. Your adversaries will fight back to enforce the covenants they established with you. When you cry out to the gods of the heathens, don't expect to get results. A lot of Israelites have been crying out to the gods of the heathens when unclean spirits persecute them. Majority of Israelites and indigenous black people cannot overcome the strongholds the Satan's place on their life because they are crying out to the wrong God. Instead of maturing spiritually, a lot of Israelites remain stagnant. The Most High is calling his people out of darkness. However, majority of Israelites are lovers of darkness and many partnered with Rome to secure their salvation. A lot of Israelites use the devices of Satan to cast out Satan. The scripture said, can Satan cast out Satan? And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? If Satan casts out Satan, he's divided against himself. How can his kingdom stand? The kingdom of darkness is a united kingdom. The created creatures that rebel against the Most High unite together to remove everything that glorify the Father in the earth. That is why the beast system is anti the Most High. When you cry out to false gods and idols, you're giving the kingdom of darkness power over you. Not only are you relinquishing your power over the devils, but you also reestablish the evil covenants. When you cry out to idols, you're preventing the Most High from intervening in your life. Israelites, the spirit of idolatry is crafty, and this spirit needs its own chapter in the Spirit Realm series. You can't have idolatry without sorcery. They go hand in hand. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. A lot of Israelites in religion, as well as in the awakening, serve idols. Many Israelites are in denial about their participation in idolatry. If you worship the Messiah instead of the Father, you're an idolater. Remember, you cannot serve two masters. If the Israelites would humble themselves and allow the Most High to renew their minds, they would see that they are serving false gods. The spirit of pride is a stumbling block to many in the awakening. When the people of the Most High cry out to false gods, the Most High cannot help in delivering you during spiritual warfare. If you look at the indigenous black people's journey throughout history, their enemies rule over them. The covenants many of you established with the gods of the heathens are hunting you down in every generation. The scriptures repeatedly say, make no covenants with the heathens and with their gods. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. The evil covenants are coming back to manifest in your life as well as your descendants if no one break those covenants. Evil covenants that are not properly handled turn into generational curses. The Israelites are struggling with generational curses. Israelites, that is why it is important for you to return to the Father to get the help you need to triumphant over your enemies. If you don't humble yourself and return to the Father, your enemies will continue to rule over you. You will live a defeated life regardless if you're in the awakening. 
the hidden covenants in your life are destroying you. Rome has taught you to cry out to their gods for deliverance. With you accepting their gods to be your Lord and Savior, you establish a covenant with their gods. Remember all those altar calls you participated in in the pagan church? Have you renounced those covenants? None of those prayers went to the Father. The heathens made you worship the creatures of the Most High instead of the Most High, the Father. That is why a lot of you struggle to maintain your deliverance. When these devils return, they place a stronger hold on your life and your condition is worse than before. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Your sins and iniquity separates you from the Father. If the Most High, the Father, doesn't give permission to his angels, people, animals, and to any of his created creatures, none will aid you. A lot of Israelites are hiding behind Messiah. The Messiah cannot intervene on your behalf unless the Father give him permission. Even the Messiah doesn't know when the Most High will deliver you. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. It is the Most High that must issue the command to his creatures to intervene on your behalf. Once they have permission, they will assist you. If you don't have a relationship with the Father, nor do you know who he is, how can you cry out to him? Your intercessor, the mediator between the Most High and man, cannot save you until the Father say so. If your ways doesn't please the Most High, you don't have access to the Father and his army. That is why so many have unanswered prayers. When the Israelites and indigenous black people reject the Father for the gods of the heathens, they are rejecting the Father and all of his resources unknowingly. Remember, the Most High is your provider. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Israelites, I hope you're starting to comprehend why you must return to the Father and give him all the glory and praises. For some Israelites, they have been crying out to strange gods their entire life. They have no clue who the Father is. They've established a relationship with the false Messiah pretending to be the Most High in the flesh. Some Israelites cannot tell the difference between their Savior, the Most High, the Father, and the Deliverer, the Prince over the Righteous. Many Israelites refuse to allow the Most High to renew their minds. How can the Most High transform you if you decline his calls? The scripture said, you can't enter the kingdom unless you're born again. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. When you're born again, you don't take the mentality and teachings taught to you by the workers of iniquity into your new beginnings, regardless of how true you believe their doctrines are. A half truth is still a lie. You have to unlearn everything to properly learn the truth. If you're continuously comparing the truth you're learning in the awakening to the doctrines of Rome for confirmation, you will perish. The doctrines of Rome is not the standard to compare the word of the Most High to. Many Israelites are measuring the truth of the Most High's words with the abominations taught to them in religion. Religious doctrines shouldn't be the standard to compare the truth the Most High is revealing in the awakening. You should compare the truth to the word of the Most High. The word is the standard. To all who use Rome doctrines as the standard, the spirit of confusion will destroy your life. The Most High did not give us the spirit of confusion. But God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Some Israelites say they left the church, yet they carry the church belief with them everywhere they go. If you return to the Father by serving him in the spirit and in truth, how can your beliefs be identical to the beliefs of the beast religion? Can two walk together unless they agree? Can two walk together except they be agreed? Your ways in faith shouldn't match with the beast religion that Satan's created to be a stumbling block to you. 
What do light have in common with darkness? By now, everyone should know religion have a form of godliness, but far from the truth of the Most High. If Rome and the various religions don't serve the Most High, what do you have in common with Rome and their doctrines? Religion is sorcery. The high-level workers of iniquity and religion teach the laws of the Most High are done away with. That is lawlessness. Why are you hanging on to their fairy tales? Everything the high-level workers of iniquity do in religion, they do it to please the Messiah that came in his own name, the same Messiah that proclaimed to be the most high in the flesh. The false Messiah is the same entity that said he wants to be like the most high. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. The scriptures said in the book of Corinthians, all of the sacrifices the heathens make are not made to the Father, the Most High. The gods of the heathens are fallen angels. The scripture said the heathens make their sacrifices to devils. The word of the Most High said, you shouldn't have any fellowship with devils. The workers of iniquity who serve devils will certainly defile you. The word of the Most High further explain you cannot sit at the tables of devils and fellowship with the Most High. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. To my fellow Israelites who believe you can take the doctrines of Rome with you into the awakening, you're doing exactly what the scripture said in the book of Corinthians, sitting at the tables of devils and trying to sit at the table of the Most High. The scripture said you cannot do both, just as the scripture said you cannot serve two masters. The time has come for you to comprehend this truth, to give the Most High the Father access to help you. Israelites, it is extremely important that you know who the God of our fathers is to get the help that you need. When you begin to engage in spiritual warfare, you can't cry out to the gods of the Gentiles for help. The workers of iniquity will bound you even further. Also, when you begin to fight back properly, the unclean spirits know that you're aware of their presence in your life and they will increase the attacks against you. That is why it is important for you to know who to cry out to. Israelites, everything you need, you must ask the Father. The Messiah, our intercessor, will bring your prayers to the Father. The Messiah is not the only angel that bring your prayers to the Father. The Holy Angel Raphael bring your prayers to the Father as well. I am Raphael, one of the seven holy angels, which present the prayers of the saints and which go in and out before the glory of the Holy One. The Father, the Most High, will decide if the life you live is worth Him intervening on your behalf. If the Most High determined that He will assist you, the Father will send His angels or a person to help you. If your ways please the Most High, He will make your enemies at peace with you. When a man's ways please the Lord, He maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Israelites, do not let idols or the gods of the heathens place a barrier between you and the Most High, the Father. Now that you know you must cry out to the Father, the next step is for you to know what is the spirit realm. The spirit realm is a parallel world to this realm. The realm of the flesh where you and I dwell, the earth, is the physical realm. The spirit realm is where our spirits interact with other spirits. In other words, the spirit realm is where we can see our everyday interactions with the invisible creatures of the Most High. All of the descendants of Adam travel to the spirit realm and engage with spirits. Every time you sleep, your spirit enters the spirit realm. Your dreams give you a glimpse of what is happening in the spirit realm. Israelites, it is important for you to pay attention to your dreams. Your dreams are not given to you for no reason. The Most High interact with you in the spirit realm. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction.
It is important for all Israelites and indigenous black people to increase their knowledge on the spirit realm. The Most High said in the last days, his sons and daughters will prophesy and dream dreams. When the Most High began to give his people prophecy via dreams, you need to be able to comprehend those dreams. If Joseph wasn't knowledgeable about the spirit realm, as well as receiving help from the father, King Herod would have succeeded in killing the Messiah when he was a child. Joseph followed the instructions given to him by the Most High in the spirit realm to flee to Mizraim to hide from King Herod. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt. Most people believe Joseph received confirmation in the physical realm before departing to Mizraim. Nobody came to confirm to Joseph in the physical realm to flee to Mizraim. Joseph honored the Most High and listened to the instructions given to him in the spirit realm and obeyed the Father. Israelites, there are some things the Most High will reveal to you in the spirit realm, and it will require great faith to believe and honor what is being said to you. Your dreams are important. You must ask the Most High to give you wisdom about the spirit realm. Majority of the scriptures written by the prophets are dreams and visions given to them. The father made the prophets write everything down to preserve his words throughout the generations. Give them the books of the handwriting and they will read them and will know me for the creator of all things and will understand how there is no other God but me. And let them distribute the books of thy handwriting children to children, generation to generation, nations to nations. When Israelites in this generation slander a person for speaking on what the Most High revealed to them in the spirit realm, what right do they have to gossip and slander a person's name? If they were truly serving the Most High, they wouldn't engage in foolish debates, slander, and gossip. The scripture said not to get involved in foolish arguments because it produced strife and division. The Israelites and the indigenous black people are known to slander their own in the name of Jesus and Yahshua. Be careful on whom you slander. When you contend with a person, the Most High gave revelation and that person honored the Father by obeying. When you try to discredit and slander them because the Most High didn't give you understanding, you're fighting with the Father, the Most High. You're not fighting the individual the Most High used to bring forth the message to share with his people. A lot of Israelites are bold when it comes to their own. Just know that you're fighting with the Father when you come against his anointed. Remember when the Israelites in the generation of Samuel rejected him as their leader? The Most High said to Samuel, it's not you they've rejected, it's me they have rejected. And all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee. But they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Be careful on how you treat people and the words you speak against them. Not only do you have to give an account of your words, you're fighting the Father when the Most High sent his anointed to do his will. Yes, the Most High has many doing his will in this generation. The scripture said the Most High has vessels made for honor. The Most High is always looking for people he could show himself strong through. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore, from henceforth, thou shalt have wars. Rome has a stronghold on the people of the Most High. The Father is trying to deliver his people from the house of bondage. Many Israelites are rebelling and wanting to stay in bondage, just like the Israelites in the generation of Moses who wanted to go back to Mizraim for its luxuries, despite the bondage. 
The Most High said, in the last days, he will pour out his spirit on all flesh. His sons and daughters will prophesy, dream dreams, and have visions. And it shall come to pass, in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. When the Most High began to make his sons and daughters prophesied in this generation, having ear to hear, who can contend with what the Father is revealing through his anointed people? Israelites, the scriptures are dreams and visions seen by the prophets who preserve them for you. Just as the Most High used Enoch to write everything he saw, and today we are reading his visions and dreams in the numerous books written by Enoch. And now, my son Methuselah, all these things I am recounting to thee and writing down for thee, and I have revealed to thee everything and given thee books concerning all these. So preserve, my son Methuselah, the books from thy father's hand, and see that thou deliver them to the generations of the world. I have given wisdom to thee and to thy children, and thy children that shall be to thee, that they may give it to their children for generations. This wisdom, namely, that passeth their thought. Israelites, let us be the generation that humble ourselves and obey the Father. Many of you need to ask the Father for the spirit of discernment to better recognize the Holy Spirit operating in the people the Most High raised in this generation to help you. The spirit realm is governed by the laws of the Most High. The language of the spirit realm are symbols. Majority of the time when you're in the spirit realm, you're observing more than speaking. What you see in the spirit realm are symbolic. For example, a house in the physical realm is a place where you live and raise your family. A house in the spirit realm symbolizes your life. If you're in a house that belongs to your uncle, the dream is revealing something about your uncle or something that happened at your uncle's house. The spirit realm is not governed by time like the physical realm. Everything that is going to take place in the physical realm and your life takes place in the spirit realm first and then it manifests in the physical realm. In the spirit realm, the Most High can show you prophecies that will take place in the future, as well as prophecies that took place in the past and present. The spirit realm is not bound by time. The spirit realm will reveal to you the unclean spirits you made a covenant and interact with in the physical realm. The spirit realm will show you all the hidden things the eyes of the flesh cannot see in the physical realm. Israelites, the spirit realm is not the only place you interact with spirits. You interact with spirits in the physical realm. The reason you cannot see certain spirits, some spirits are disembodied while some can transform themselves to have an appearance like mankind. The book of Corinthians revealed there are several body types. There are earthly bodies and heavenly bodies. Each body type has its own glory. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him. And to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies, and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Israelites, you just heard there are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies. Each have its own glory. The Most High is a spirit, the angels are spirits, and we are spirits as well. Your spirit is housed in a human body. When death takes place, your spirit separates from its earthly garment, the human body. Your spirit goes to Sheol, the afterlife, until the end of the world comes. When your spirit enters the spirit realm, your dreams don't show your spirit. When you do see yourself, you see your human flesh that symbolizes you in the spirit realm. In the spirit realm, you interact with good and bad spirits. Israelites, it is important for you to know what you interact with. Unclean spirits are disembodied spirits. They don't have flesh and bones like you and me. Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. The reason we have a flesh body, the Most High gave us one when we passed through our mother's womb. 
A human body is required for us to operate in the physical realm. Unclean spirits do not have bodies, which is why they can operate in people. The man in the tomb had numerous unclean spirits living in him. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Unclean spirits are tormenting spirits. When an evil covenant is forged between you and the Satans, as well as the workers of iniquity, the Satans send the unclean spirit to persecute you. These spirits attach themselves to you to bring misery to you. The reason so many people are living defeated life, many mistake unclean spirits for emotions and personality. If you don't know an unclean spirit is persecuting you, how then will that spirit flee from you? The scripture said the only way a spirit flee is by submitting to the most high, resisting the devil, and the devil will flee from you. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The workers of iniquity who run this world with the Satans made Israelites and the indigenous black people take prescription drugs and man-made medicine to get the spirit of infirmity to flee. In order for the spirit of infirmity to flee, you have to do what the word of the Most High said. If you're listening to the workers of iniquity in the beast system on how to get a devil to flee, you will live a life treating symptoms and never getting to the root. The man-made medicines are not made to cure you, only to treat symptoms. Why is that, Israelites? Have you ever heard of prescription pills curing a person from a disease? Never. Those drugs are meant to keep you sick. That is why they have multiple side effects. Treating symptoms with the devices of Satan is not going to cause the unclean spirit to flee from you. Remember, Satan cannot cast out Satan. Using Satan's devices to destroy Satan will backfire on you. You have to use the word of the Most High to get these devils to flee from you. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. If you don't know it's a spirit that is causing you to become ill, you will never be delivered from the spirit of infirmity. Have you heard of people putting themselves through harsh chemical treatments? The doctors proclaim they are delivered after receiving the man-made treatments. A few years later, the disease returned. This is what happens when you treat the surface and not the root. When the devil returned, it will come back with seven other devils more wicked than itself and enter that person and dwell there. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Israelites, this is why you need to know what you're dealing with. Spiritual warfare is not a game. You can find the truth in the altar scriptures with the Holy Spirit guiding you. Emotions and personalities are not the only unclean spirits the scriptures speak of. The children born to the watchers and the daughters of men are unclean spirits as well. The Nephthalims were a hybrid species. They were part angelic and part men. They had a mortal body like men because they passed through their mother's womb. Their spirits were like their fathers, the watchers. When the Most High destroyed them from the face of the earth, the Most High said they would become unclean spirits on the earth. These unclean spirits would torment mankind, cause chaos and many offenses. And now the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth and on the earth shall be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle and work destruction on earth and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women, because they have proceeded from them. As you can see, the role of unclean spirits is to torment you. The spirit of poverty, anger, infirmity, and countless others are the root cause to why some of you live in poverty, sickly, and unhappy. 
Somewhere in your life, you made a covenant with these devils, giving them permission to torment you. Israelites, that is why you have to be careful with the covenants you make. As the series continue, we will dive deep into the covenants you made with the Satans, causing unclean spirits to torment you. There are some disembodied spirits that are good. Examples of good disembodied spirits are the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of truth, the spirit of love and the spirit of peace are some examples of spirits that are disembodied. Another group of spirits you interact with are the angels. The angels are the children of the heavens. The angels interact with us daily. The Most High gave them the ability to transform. The angels can take on the likeness of mankind to interact with us. The scripture said, be careful on how you treat people. You may entertain angels. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Israelites, there are countless angels around us to help us. A good example I can give you is the angel of might that followed Judah when he went to war. Therefore, my father was free from anxiety in the wars when I was with my brethren. For he saw in a vision concerning me that an angel of might followed me everywhere that I should not be overcome. The angel of might was with Judah. However, Judah and the other people couldn't see the angel that assists him. The Most High allowed Jacob to see the angel of might that was with Judah in the spirit realm. Israelites, the angels are very involved with our everyday life, the holy angels and the fallen ones. The fallen angels are the angels that rebel against the Most High. These are the angels that decided that they didn't want to be under the commands of the Father, the Most High. These angels are what we know as demons. All the fallen angels are demons. Like the holy angels, the fallen angels can transform. The scripture says Satan can transform himself into an angel of light. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. The angels are ministering spirits as well. A lot of the angels fell with Satan. The scriptures made it known that the ministers of Satan, the fallen angels, also transformed themselves into ministers of righteousness. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Some of your pastors and spiritual leaders are demons disguising themselves. The watchers that had children with the daughters of men are demons. The angels that were cast down to the earth with Satan are demons. Azazel and all the leaders of the angels that fell are demons. Israelites, there are demons everywhere in this earth. They live here with you. You walk among them every day. Not everything that look human are human. I have been exposing the seed of the fallen for a long time on this channel. But God in his mercy drove him from among us to this dark earth, for he had become darkness itself and a worker of unrighteousness. And the great dragon was cast out, an old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The fallen angels, the demons, rule all the powerful kingdoms of this world. That is why Satan said to the Messiah he would give him all the kingdoms of this world if he would bow down and worship him. The demons that rule over the powerful nations of today are principalities. Another name for the angels are prince. The scripture said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Satan set principalities over nations, cities, all the regions, and other various places. Principalities are high-level demons. These entities rule over the most powerful nations of today. The book of Enoch revealed that Satan promised to give the angels that followed him great kingdoms. Today, there's not a country that is not being controlled by a principality. But now, O Adam, we will make known to thee what came upon us through him before his fall from heaven. He gathered together his hosts and deceived them 
promising them to give them a great kingdom, a divine nature, and other promises he made them. His hosts believed that his words were true, so they yielded to him and renounced the glory of God. All the kingdoms of the heathens are governed by principalities and dark powers. Some of these principalities appear to be human, but they are empty shelf occupied by demons. Israelites, it's not a coincidence that none of the nations whose leaders are of Adam's descendants are superpower nations, despite being rich in minerals and all kinds of resources. Satan waged war with Adam and his seed. The Satans want this earth to be their own kingdom because they were kicked out of their original habitation. But Satan, the hater of all good, thought within himself, Whereas God has promised salvation to Adam by covenant and that he would deliver him out of all the hardship that have befallen him, but has not promised me by covenant and will not deliver me out of my hardship. Nay, since he has promised him that he should make him and his seed dwell in the kingdom in which I once was, I will kill Adam. The earth shall be rid of him and shall be left to me alone so that when he is dead, he may not have any seed left to inherit the kingdom that shall remain my own realm. God will then be in want of me and he will restore me to it with my hosts. Israelites, there is a hierarchy system in the heavens, just as there is a hierarchy in the earth and our households. There are various angels and each have their position and power, as well as their own names and their purpose. There are four holy angels that stand in the presence of the Most High. Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Fanuel. These angels are high-level angels, and Michael is over them all. By the way, every angel bow down in respect to other angels that are superior to them. Bowing down, showing respect, doesn't mean worship. Some Israelites say that the book of Hebrews said that all the angels worship the Messiah. That is false. The angels worship and serve the Father only. When they worship the Father, they stand according to their ranks. Have courage, Enoch, do not fear, and showed me the Lord from afar, sitting on his very high throne. For what is there on the tenth heaven, since the Lord dwells here? On the tenth heaven is God. In the Hebrew tongue, he is called Aravat. And all the heavenly troops would come and stand on the ten steps according to their rank, and would bow down to the Lord, and would again go to their places in joy and felicity, singing songs in the boundless light with small and tender voices, gloriously serving Him. The angels show respect to other angels that are of a higher rank, just as we show respect to our elders and our parents. Anyone who is highly esteemed in our eyes, we respect them. Showing respect and worshiping is two different things. Israelites, you have to learn to remove the words inserted in the scriptures by the heathens to be a stumbling block to you. That is why I recommend when reading the scriptures, make sure the Holy Spirit is guiding you. Israelites, regardless if the numerous scriptures I share with you about the position of the holy angel Michael doesn't help your unbelief, the holy angel Michael is the highest ranking angel and he it is that will deliver our people and all the righteous. He is the one you refer to as the Messiah. To the doubters, we all agree that the Messiah is our intercessor, the mediator between the most high and men. Being an intercessor is one of the many roles the Messiah have, correct? I will show you in the scriptures where the most high the father called the holy angel Michael the intercessor. And I will give thee, Enoch, my intercessor, the archistratage, Michael, for the handwritings of thy fathers, Adam, Seth, Enos, Canaan, Mahalalel, and Jared, thy father. Israelites, all you have to do is ask the father and he will show you. There's no need to debate. The holy angel, Michael, is above all the angels in rank. Do your research. Israelites, there are good and evil spirits. Unclean spirits are evil spirits that torment you. The holy disembodied spirits are the spirits that help you and bring the will of the Most High into your life. There are holy angels and fallen angels. The holy angels are the angels that are behind the scenes helping you. 
The eye of the flesh cannot see them unless the angel transform and take on a human appearance. The fallen angels are demons. They are the rebellious angels that follow the Satans and pollute mankind with all the abomination they have taught mankind. The Most High revealed in the book of Enoch that we perish because we learn all the abominations of the angels. And a command has gone forth from the presence of the Lord concerning those who dwell on the earth that their ruin is accomplished because they have learned all the secrets of the angels and all the violence of the Satans and all their powers, the most secret ones, and all the power of those who practice sorcery, and the power of witchcraft, and the power of those who make molten images for the whole earth. All of the descendants of Adam are spirits, like all the created creatures of the Most High. Your spirit live in a flesh body. Adam and Eve's original body is nothing like the flesh body we have today. After Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, the Most High made them a body of flesh that is suitable for the earth. Israelites, I hope your knowledge has increased on the different types of spirits. The spirit realm is unique. It is important that you increase your knowledge about the spirit realm. You operate in that realm every day. Your dream life gives you insight of what is happening in the spirit realm. I ask that you keep an open mind about the spirit realm as the Most High reveals to us everything we need to know about spiritual warfare. When the Most High begins to pour out his spirit on all flesh, I want the Israelites, the strangers, and all of Adam's descendants to be able to understand the wisdom given to them in the last days. Israelites, go deeper with the Father and let your knowledge increase. The time has come for you to seek the face of the Most High, the Father, to get to know Him in the Great Awakening. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness, in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures 